This is the third round of nerfs that Season 4 Mythic Plus is receiving now on the PTR, and it seems like what I said in the previous video seems right. Blizzard has learned, and they have the data to back it up as well, that the easier the tuning is, it seems like people are just having more fun in Mythic Plus. I'm sure some of you have seen the infograph where there are more keys being done in Season 3 versus Season 2. And a lot of that just came down to, well, the dungeons are way less punishing in Season 3 to complete. And I'm very heartened to see that Blizzard are continuously tuning the dungeons downwards for Season 4. After all, it's an experimental season. We have seen the Dragonflight dungeons already. Let everyone have some fun before the War Within Season 1 starts. But shout out to Blizzard here. First up, we have Uldaman. Fiery Surge damage reduced by 50%. Now, if some of you don't know what Fiery Surge does, it's probably because you don't play a healer. It's the one where the boss does searing cannon fire, where he targets certain players' locations. Every time they fire the cannon, there's a party-wide damage in the form of Fiery Surge. And this is usually where your healers would basically use healing cooldowns. I've got to be honest here though, I definitely didn't expect nerfs to the Lost Dwarfs because I feel like in Udaman, the first boss, the Lost Dwarfs, is pretty irrelevant. There's a reason why everyone goes to Bromark first. Well, at least on high keys, because you want Bloodlust for the second boss. Because Bromark is way harder than the, you know, the first boss, which is the Lost Dwarfs. So gotta say, I'm surprised. I don't think the first boss was overtuned, but hey, like I said, I think people are having way more fun when the dungeons are way less punishing, so good on them. Burning Pitches Maximum Radius Reduced from 10 yards to 6 yards. Okay, so this change affects tyrannical keys mostly. Why? Well, actually some high fortify as well. So Burning Pitch is basically the fiery patches on the ground that is left behind. And for the folks who have done this fight on weeks where, you know, the fight just goes on forever like tyrannical, very quickly you have this room just covered with fire, especially if you're doing a pump and people don't bait the fires properly to clump up together. It gets very tricky to maneuver. And then you couple that with some of the frontals that the boss does that you need to dodge like the arrow mechanic, it just quickly gets very overwhelming. So reducing the maximum radius from 10 yards to 6 yards, this a 40% nerf, makes it way more park friendly. The next one is pretty hilarious. Address an issue where heavy arrow is damaging pets. I actually did not even know that this kind of bug exists. Which means that somewhere in those keys, the boss is actually one-shotting pets and you know they have to spend GCDs reviving their pets. So I actually do not know, but this is actually hilarious. Then we have Sentinel Talondra's nerf. Oh, this is so needed. I feel like this is way needed more than the Lost Dwarfs. In fact, I wish they actually tuned this when Udaman was first in the rotation. Sentinel Talondra's was probably the deal breaker on Tyrannical Puck Keys. And let's dive in and I'll explain why. So we have Earthen Shards initial damage reduced by 20%, Earthen Shards periodic damage reduced by 12.5%. This is basically the bleed that Talondra's places on the party. And ask any healer who is healing this fight, the bleed takes really hard. So the fact that they are nerfing the periodic damage by 12.5%, and mind you, this is over a, I believe, 10 seconds window with 2 seconds interval of damages. The initial damage plus the dot damage nerf just means that your healer has just way more buffer time to kind of top the group up especially the target of the bleed. And there was a time where Sentinel Talondras was one of those bosses on high tyrannicals where you probably want to have the ability to clear bleeds, like playing a dwarf. I think there were certain comms out there that were looking out for evokers to clear bleeds as well. Because one of the big problems with Talondras is the bleed damage is essentially coupled with the stomp AoE damage. The other thing that I wish they fixed on this boss, and I hope they look into it, if you have a Destro lock with you in the group, they would randomly stun the boss, which totally upsets the rhythm of which you should basically stun the boss with those orbs in the room. Ideally, the tank should be the one controlling when the boss gets stunned. And if you want to understand why the boss needs to be stunned at certain intervals, I've covered this in my M Plus Masterclass for Uldaman. You might want to check that out. It's on the homepage of this channel. But yeah, Blizzard, if you're listening, you might want to look into the Destro Lock just randomly stunning the boss. Not very fun in punks. The next change, Amberon. Burning heat duration reduced from 10 seconds to 6 seconds. This is really the party-wide damage that the boss puts out. Very similar to the Earthen Shard kind of dot damage. I think it's 10 seconds with every tick of damage at the 2 second interval. So essentially you are skipping 2 instances of damage here. 40% nerf, we'll take it. Adjusted Seeking Flames visual so it doesn't clip into the terrain. Now if you don't know what Seeking Flame is, this is basically the fiery orbs that is fired off during the boss fight and you need to dodge them. It's like the bullet hell mechanic. This is pretty minor, I'll be honest. I haven't really seen a lot of instances where the orbs just gets clipped or it's hard to see. But I did notice that Blizzard is now fixing all these clipping issues. The last one was Halls of Infusion in the second round of nerfs. 
for the AOE ground effect on the slope to the third boss, right? So quality of life changes here. Moving on to Ruby life pools, and this is big, very big. In fact, I will say maybe bigger than the Udaman nerves. Primalist Flame Dancer, if you don't know what this mob does, just know that this used to break keys in season one. And the reason is because the Flame Dancers will do this Flame Dance ability and the only way to stop this ability is to crop control them. But the problem is there were so much casters in this dungeon that would spam this like very painful spell bolts on the party that sometimes crowd controls are being used to stop those casts to give your healer some room to recover. So a lot of pucks end up having no crowd control to stop the flame dancer's damage. So if you read the wording here, it's very specific. End of channel damage reduced by 25%. And the way flame dance works is it's a six seconds channel. During the six second, it basically does damage to its target. And then at the end of six seconds, if you don't stop the cast, then there's party wide damage. And the reason why they're nerfing this is to make sure it's not a one shot, basically to make it less punishing and you definitely have ample time to try and stun the flame dance cars as long as you coordinate who should save stuns and crowd controls for this moment but again in the theme of making everything less punishing we welcome this change then we have kyra which is the final boss right and we covered this in the previous round of nerfs the final boss one of the biggest problems was this flame spit mechanic where it drops a fiery debuff on people that lets them tick down in terms of hell before they spawn that fiery puddle. And the problem was on high keys, this thing absolutely trucks and your healer better be on point at this moment or, you know, pop defensives. The fact that they have now brought it down to two targets instead of three targets just means that your healer now has less healing to do, less panicking to do naturally. You can think of this as a 33% nerf to this mechanic. And Ruby Life Pools is one well, of those dungeons where the end of the dungeon is very intense because the second boss is not a kickwalk. It's pretty hard, especially on parks where people can't bait the meteor strike. Then you get through that and then the bridge is not an easy fight either. And then you have the mini boss before the third boss where people don't know the shield mechanic and you know, could get messy really quickly. And then you get to the last boss and you just have to pray that your healer can keep up with the flame spit mechanic. So nerfing this just makes it, you know, way more palatable for Ruby Life Pool. So I'm all for it. Good stuff. Next one, Algatas Academy, Veximus. Mana bomb periodic damage is reduced by 20%. I don't know how I feel about this. I actually don't think mana bomb's dot was an issue. So the periodic damage nerf here refers to the dot component of mana bomb. And if you don't know what it does, Veximus puts debuffs on people. And after four seconds, your debuff expires, you drop a puddle that is bad. Don't stand in the puddle. That four seconds, every second you're taking dot damage. I don't think that was the painful component, but I think the reason why they're nerfing this is Veximus have this very bad overlap that I think a lot of you experienced in season one. And I made a video, a one minute and plus tip on this, which corresponds to Veximus's energy levels. When it gets 100% energy, it does like a party wide damage, right? And at the point in time, just because of how the boss functions, there's an overlap in damage patterns. And I think Blizzard is trying to circumvent that by just making sure Mana Bomb ticks for less so that overlap is easier to deal with in Pucks. And by Pucks, I mean like plus 20, 21, 22 Tyrannicals. Well, now it's plus 10. I will only know for certain where I test this on PTR. I'll keep you guys posted. Corrupted Mana now has a slight delay before inflicting damage to players inside of its effect. I wonder what's the reason for this. So this is basically the the name for the damage instance you'll take when you stand in the bad puddles on Veximus. And they're saying that there's a slight activation delay now, so you can just quickly step in and not take damage. I wonder if that's to just encourage people to stack where they drop their puddles, maybe. Remember there was this crazy strat at the start of season one where people were using the pillars to line of sight. And by the way, they fixed that Veximus can no longer be line of sight with its um, instances of damage. But what I liked about the strat is you're stacking puddles and it's very neat. So maybe this is why they're making this change. So overall, what do we think? I think these are good changes. A lot of people are kind of looking out for class tuning changes though. And I suspect we'll get it before the season launches. Because in case you guys missed it, 23rd April is when season four will launch. And right now we haven't really seen massive class tuning changes. At least as a tank player, one of the things I'm hoping they shake up is basically the tank meta. I think Vengeance and Prop Paladins are still ahead because of their utility. I'll be very surprised if there's no class tuning changes. And I'm sure some of you are looking out for that too before you decide what you want to play for season four. And I've already heard some similar feedback from one of the best M-plus tanks that I will interview on my podcast. 
in case you guys missed it, video is in the middle of the screen. I interviewed Pika, one of the best M plus tanks every season, always top on the leaderboards. And speaking about videos, if you want to get prepared for season four, I've already released the Plater profile for season four. You can click on the video in the middle of the screen to learn more. And speaking about the Plater profile, a big shout out to all the Patreon subscribers that you see on screen. Thank you for making this profile free and available for the community. You folks are the real MVP. And if you'd like to support us, links to the Patreon in the description. More season four M plus coverage coming your way. Make sure to subscribe and I'll see you in the next video.